All right, Remus, we've had your dad on. Um, your famous dad, Tyron Smith, yep. here at the podcast. And one thing I like I, I say about your dad, and we'll get into your career, is that, you know, I've known Tyron for a long time, but not just because I know him, but he has been an unbelievable manager, a great leader, helping so many young players, like players like yourself, Adam from a lot, Blake, Payne Haas, and the list goes on. These mm. are some of the biggest players that he's he's kind of managing right now mm. in rugby league. But he's got a huge stable of players, and all I hear is great things about mm. your dad because he's a great leader, and he helps so many people lead a clean life so they could be their best possible self, mm. especially when they play rugby league, but he also helps them outside of the game. But it's great to have you on. I know you're back from the the, the, the Catalan Dragons. From yeah. there in France, what a what a place to live. Far yeah. out, what a life. How old are you now? I'm 27. Fuck man, what a life this guy's got. I didn't get to, <laughs> I didn't get to any of those places then. I was only till like I was 30 th something before I was seen the world. This guy's going everywhere now. But you know you've played for the great clubs like the Bulldogs, the um, the, uh, the the Storm. Now the Catalan Dragons, but before that, let's start at the beginning. You know, you were born in 1997, you played for the, the mascot Jets. Let's start at the beginning. Um, where did you play your junior rugby league? And where did you sort of evolve into there after that? Yeah, so um, sort of started, um, well, obviously when I was young, under sixes and stuff like that. But in saying that, we did do a bit of moving around because obviously, like we just spoke about, um, dad was moving clubs and and um and all that kind of stuff so and it all it all started um to come together I, I played my junior footy at mascot mascot jets now called mascot juniors but um played there with my cousins my best mates and um that's where that's where like that's where it all started pretty much and it started to become sort of serious so it was um yeah i, I sort of i went to i went to school in the, in the like local area matchville sports and um, yeah, like I said, my cousins went to the same school, my best mates went to the same school. So it was, um, yeah, mascot was the, the place to be and we had a pretty good side as well. I, I went, I was started there under 10s, under 11s mm -hmm. and all the way through to all, all 18, we all played together. So we all played a long time together, but um, yeah, grew up in the Eastern suburbs and mascot was where I was every weekend, hanging out. Um, rough area bro especially <laughs> yeah. back when i grew up there yeah back, back in your like definitely back in your day and you know it's had its fair share um recently about the last 10 or so years so yeah. it's um but yeah that's all i knew when i was younger was rugby league school mm. and just hanging out with my cousins and and my best mates and stuff like that so mm. yeah mate it was all mascot jets was the go when we were younger did your dad play? No, your dad played for Kenzo. Yeah. See, look, I started at Mascot Jets when I was eight. Yeah. And Mascot always said, you're the best player to never represent <laughs> about me. Is that a good <laughs> Is that good? Is that? <laughs> it's not good, but I was pretty happy with that. Yeah. That's the closest I'm going to get to representing something in junior yeah. footy. But it's great that you, you know, what, what's good about it is it seemed like you had a lot of fun playing rugby mm. league. Like you really enjoyed it. You played with your cousins, like mm. you said, your family. Obviously, out of all your cousins and that, you were kind of the one that sort of went to that next level. Was there any other cousins that came close or what was it about, you know, them that didn't go to that next level? Um, yeah, like I come from a pretty talented family and we all, we all had sort of our own talents and what we are good at. Um, well, let's just say that you obviously your mum's side's the Mundines. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. so obviously we spoke about my old man. He's Tyron Smith. He played rugby league, and so it's sort of in the blood. And my and my mum's side um, is my, my uncle's Anthony Mundine. So mm. in saying that, I come from pretty good bloodlines, and and then in, in saying that also, um, obviously my family, mm. like I got cousins Blake Ferguson, he played NRL. Mm. I had a couple of younger cousins that are coming through, but um. For me, it was, I'm not, I'm not sure, like, I feel like I had a blessing in disguise, which was my old man, oh, my dad. Tough. He's, um, you know, the, the, it comes to a time hmm. when you're younger where the, you take a certain path to knuckle down, discipline, sacrifice, hard work, or you go the other route where most of my cousins and most of my good mates went down, which is, which I'm not saying it's good or bad, or but 
the love party. going out. They yeah, love going, going out, having yeah. like having a good time, and like which is like which which most people yeah, would go definitely. Down. especially that age. 15, 16. 100%. But I, I think I done the same thing. Mm. Like I was playing rugby league. You, you grow up in those areas. It's it, it's so hard to make in mm. rugby league, Remus. Yeah. Like it's not – you need a lot of discipline. Mm. Um, obviously your dad was there to yeah. make sure that he pushed the right path because there's more players that don't make mm. it than do make it. Oh, right? That's crazy, yeah. You know, so it's not – it's very common that mm. players will go – you know what, I'm 16, I'm 17, I live in these areas, I want to go out. Mm. I want to go out and party, I want to have a good time. I don't want to lose my youth. Mm. You know, A lot of players, I think, go through that. Where I think you were lucky mm. was your dad said, hey, man, this is the path. Yeah. You know, I'm showing you the path. This is what I want. This is what we need to do to go to that next level. And obviously, I've met your grandparents. Yeah. And they were a lot softer on you. Mm. I spoke to them. Yeah. <laughs> your dad was a disciplinarian. Yeah. But what's funny is... Your grandparents were tough on Tyrone. Mm. Yeah. So it skips a generation. Yeah, no, it's crazy. How did, it? how did, how did, how was that sort of mixture with your grandparents being the way they were, mm. your dad making it to how your dad was to you? Because your dad was the way mm. he was to you. Like, yeah, they were to him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was, it's, yeah, it's, it, when you think about it like that, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty true. Like, um, I, th I think back to my childhood and when I, when I was 14, 15, like we spoke about, those were the, times where all your mates are going to the parties, like you're going to hang out in these certain areas and and um but it was yeah, uh, like I said, it was a blessing in disguise, definitely, that I had my dad and like it you would get a little bit babied from the grandparents because of your grandson, it's my grandson and all that kind of stuff. But he always made sure that there's a balance of that. Mm. And I think especially being a bit younger, there was more so uh, it was good cop bad cop i feel like mm. and he was being a bad cop but only because he knew what what it takes to get to where i wanted to go mm. and he knew what it what had to be done and the sacrifices i had to make so that's why he was harder harder on me and mm. and in saying that it was hard on all of us or, or, or my other brothers too but it was just something like i feel like for myself it was something inside me that was different to my brothers or was different to my cousins where mm. I I don't know like one day it just clicked over where I didn't want I didn't want to be because I have so many cousins that like like I said played footy but then ended up going the wrong way being drug addicts being alcoholics being like whatever they are mm. and I've seen that and I never wanted to be that mm. and I've seen the the blessing of having my old man like obviously in my life but very much in my sporting career and and helping me get to where I want to go but. So it was, yeah. It was when I was younger. It was, it was you always look at them like, why is my parents doing? This? Why is my dad doing this mm. to me? Or why are you so tough for me? Yeah. And now I look back on those times, and I, I like being older now. I understand it so much, and mm. it's it's like it's, it's such life a, lessons. It's that life lessons made, right? in 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 life, and at that age, that's that's the perfect age where it can go one way or the other. Mm. Like people have done it where they got got to an older age and still gone on to do amazing things, but it's the one in a million. It's the needle in the haystack that's when right, it gets man. past a certain age, because that's where you build those traits of that sacrifice, that hard work, and all those kind of things. And I've had I've seen so many talented guys, so many talented family members that never went on to make it because of those mm. things, not sacrificing, not working hard at certain certain areas. And um, but um, yeah, it was. Yeah, like I said, I've said it a couple of times, blessing in disguise, having him there with me and and pushing me and showing me what needs to be done. And I'm not saying I was the most perfect kid when I was younger. Like I, I, I heard a couple of stories. Yeah, I, I won't mention. <laughs> I um, yeah, I'm not saying I was a saint. I never was, and not not like I always wanted to be. But it was just that those growing growing. Your pains. dad's amazing, man. Like, and I'll give you an example. You know, like when my youngest daughter mm. was, you know, going through a, a, a rough trot at school and, and, and probably not having the discipline that she needed, mm. um, I turned to your dad. Mm. I actually turned to him. I said, man, Ty, I, I, I need a hand here, bro. And um, he goes, mate, I've got just the person. And I remember at the time he goes, bro, she's, she's got no time, but mm. she's going to make time. Yeah. And, and i never forget this, this lovely lady. I forget her name. She came to my house. And 
you know, it was such a pivotal moment mm. in my daughter's life. I remember I was there and I said to the lady, I said, should I leave? She goes, no, no, I want you to stay. Mm. I want your wife to stay. And what I, what I love about your dad is he cares, he really, really cares about people. Mm. That makes a massive, yeah. massive difference. So one thing I really, like I've followed your career very closely because yeah, obviously I'm close to your family, but bro, you, you've had a fair few injuries, man. Mm. You know, yeah. the Bulldogs, like yeah. I remember the first one at the Bulldogs when you scored those, I think it was on debut. Or was yeah, this, well, yeah, yeah and you debut. scored those two tries yeah. and you were ki- like, you, like everyone was talking about Remus. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, what was it, your shoulder? I, your fractured, I fractured my tibia and fibula wow. and my leg, like snapped them in half. Fuck, tell, talk us through that, Brad, because I'm watching you, I'm going, mm. this kid's going to mm. be special, right? Yeah. You get that injury, what, what goes through your mind during that process? Yeah, and like uh, at the time, like we just spoke about, I made my debut, so I was riding high. You know, I was that's all you wanted to ever do was play one game of first grade, and I did that. And like we said, was I was being spoken about a lot, and I'm like I, I was feeling feeling good about myself. And then it was honestly like would have been t- two games later, so mm. about two three two three weeks later, um, I ended up breaking my leg. And the worst thing about it, it was it, I, I was playing New South Wales Cup at the time, and would have been the last 30 seconds of the game. Wow. I um, it was legit last 30 seconds and we're winning 30 nil. I'll never forget it. Wow. And I hesitated to go take this last run. I was thinking 30 seconds left, I'll just leave it. I was like, nah, I'll go get it. When I had a carry and then the rest is history, whatever happened, happened and I broke my leg. But it was, it was, well, I was, I was 18. I was 18, 19. Wow. So I didn't, I've never been through, like no. I had with my shoulder, but I was at the top level playing and and uh, and doing an injury like this. I just thought, not that it's all over, but all my hard work I put I put in when I was younger to get to that one game and to get to where I was to be in a conversation to be playing in semi-finals where the Bulldogs were at the time and all that kind of stuff to be just cut cut short mm. and and take the legs taken out from underneath me. It was I didn't know how to take it and. Obviously, I leaned on my family a lot. I leaned on my, my dad a lot. But, yeah, I, I was very – I feel like I was in a daze, really. You know what's funny? When I, when I was watching – man, fuck, that's nine years ago, bro. Mm. Wow, that's gone quick. But when I was – I remember watching that game. And, you know, I'm probably going to be a bit biased because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with you guys, like yeah, family yeah, yeah. friends. But I remember watching that game and I go, mate, this kid's going to be – like unbelievable how hard is it coming back from that when you know the coaching changes and then you know you're coming back from injury the confidence isn't quite mm. there what ha- what happens you come back you, you don't come back like hardly any player comes back running at full speed right especially your size mm. you're, you're a bigger player smaller yeah. players are a bit easier yeah how hard is it coming back to that level where you just left it when you were killing it yeah, it was very hard. Like, and it was my first or second major injury, so I didn't really know how to take it. I just took every day as it come, and it was hard. Like, cause there's a lot of uh, there's a lot there's a lot of talk um, upstairs in, in in my head. You know, mm. like thinking, overthinking things, and um, not not really taking uh, taking things for granted, really. And I was, um, yeah, I just had to knuckle down train hard but then to get back to that level it took me a while like mm. like we spoke about like, like there has been people that come back and hit the ground running but for myself i didn't come back hit the ground running because being at being that young age and doing that major injury and coming back and trying to get back to that top level it was hard i the first i reckon i played the first year of cup was 2017 when i came back from my injury it was man, i was playing I was playing like a, a mate, a local player, just mm. because of the injury and my mm. and and my mind playing tricks on me about yeah. my leg. My leg was fine, but yeah. it was my mind that was saying it's not it's not okay. It's or or or, or shelter it. Don't mm. don't do this or don't do that. So I, f- I found it hard and I found it hard the whole year pretty much and, until like I reckon the back end was when I started playing really good footy and 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 in New South Wales Cup and so it took me a good a good year of. Um, like trying to get your mind, yeah, trying back, to get right? my mind. It was, mm. it wasn't my body. Like I was physically, I had, a, I have a steel rod in my leg. So mm. when you think about it, and it was all calcified where the break was. So everything was normal. Like, 
mm. sweet. But mentally, I was sheltering it. I wasn't doing, I wasn't the same player I was. And it yeah. took me a while. Yeah. But it was, um, like I said, I eventually come around to it where I had that confidence of, I played 15 odd games, 16 mm. games. And so it's fine. I've had knocks on it and it's been fine. So, yeah. and that's when my mind, that's how strong my mind was in it. And honestly, just clicked and be like, oh, well, it's fine. So then that's yeah. when I started getting back to that level and started yeah. chipping at it again, you know. So yeah. fast forward, right? You, you, <clears throat> you know, there's a couple of lean seasons thereafter. There's mm. Azla left. Obviously, he's at Dean Pay. So, you know, and obviously they, they, they moved him on and I think they moved the next coach yeah. on as well. I, I don't know if it was actually it was Trent Barrett, right? Trent yeah. Barrett. They, Were you there when you were? No, Trent I left. You left, yeah. yeah. So you, you go to Melbourne. Mm which is, um, you know, a very sort of disciplinarian mm. club. But I remember there, you, you do, you're doing really well, but you got another injury at Melbourne as well. Yeah. When you were sort of like, it seems to me like every time you hit your peak, something happens to you. Mm. But I remember being with your dad here and, I, and it was a pretty serious injury. Yeah. Um, and you were over there and, and, and your dad was, I remember he was talking to me, it's all about the mentality mm. of now, thinking about what are the next steps to get back on. Talk us through what that injury was like, because again, you were hitting mm. your peak in mm. Melbourne. Yeah, you know, I don't want to go too much into it because I want to, you know, go into the yeah. Catalan Dragons and and and, and Lone Crow because yeah. I want to go into that and then our conversation yeah, yeah, we had it yeah. in front of Stevie Mali. But what was that injury like? Because you were hitting your peak, hitting your straps at Melbourne. What was that one like? Was that harder than the one at Bulldogs? Yeah, I think it it was. I don't think it was harder, but. This is at that just came at the wrong time yeah. for like at, at that time of coming off like when I went to Melbourne end of 2020 and then we played in 2021 I had my best year mm. I had my like my best year so far I played in first grade and I was and like I was just finding my straps mm. we we went all the way to the prelim and I ended up losing but that's besides mm. the point and then I was feeling good like I had a good preseason and then come to 2022 which was when it happened. I, I tore my pec yeah. in round nine in that year, and then that was okay. Like, I was okay at the time. It was like oh, I've been here before. I've I've, I've had injuries, big injuries in this, mm. and so I was I was confident. You know, I was confident coming back from that. And then eight weeks into my recovery, I tore it again. That's right. And I, I completely ruptured the whole tendon off, mm. ripped all the um. They had like little arrowheads and and rope holding it into the joint, mm. tore them all out. And that's when it really, um, that's when it really, I, uh, it was a tough time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I had a lot of experience from the first one. That's why I was so confident to come back from it, from the first mm. peck tear. And when the second one happened, I, st I sort of just shut down. Like, because I, like, like we spoke about, I was, I was riding such a high. Mm. I was playing my best footy in 21, started 2022 a pretty good, you know, and, and our team was going good. And then, for myself personally and have that injury and then have it but have, I was confident enough I was confident enough in my training and my experiences that I, like I'm, it's okay like it's, I know it's a pec tear which is, isn't good but eight weeks I'll be back hmm. eight nine weeks and eight weeks into it I tear it again and that's yeah. when it sort of not hit rock bottom in a certain point but it really really shattered like it really yeah. shattered me because I I, obviously because of the year before but how I started but because I, I, I sacrificed so much mm. I worked so hard I, I was in there earlier no, I was, no, no, no. I was staying, watching you man before yeah, the injury man. like no one could get past you, you yeah. like it was like you're on the centers if people were running at you and you could see how hard you worked mm. on your game because I'm going mate if they run at Remus on this side okay man they're gonna get tackled mm -hmm. you're best off not running to that place yeah but even your stats were through the roof yeah, so that's probably what would have been the hardest, right? Yeah, no, it was. L those things were hard, and like like I said, while well, I was I was playing pretty good footy, I, f I feel like, and I was just I was just finding myself, you know, especially at, at the Melbourne Storm, mm -hmm. you have to find your place there, and I felt like I was, I felt like I was finding my place, and to have those two injuries, it really sat me, like put me in the back seat, like I, I man, mm -hmm. after the second one, I just I needed time off, I needed. Mm -hmm time to just refresh my mind yeah. and, and get away from that kind of stuff and but again it took me a while after that first after that second tear it took me a good eight weeks to mm. clear my mind like and i want people to understand this too yeah like i think people need to get context 
I'm telling you, when you made your debut um, uh, for the Bulldogs and mm. I was watching you, mate, you're you're unbelievable. Mm. So you, you, what people don't might not understand is you're on such a high trajectory mm. when you got your injury at the Bulldogs yeah. and again yeah. at, at Melbourne. And when you're at that level, it rock bottom yeah. hits faster, yeah. right? How important was it having someone like your dad in your corner in those moments? Mm. No, it was... It was massive, like obviously, and ov my other family as well, but more so my old man because obviously he's been there and done it. He's had injuries. He's he's played at, at top level. Is you, know, you know what I mean? So he had a lot of experience. But because we had a, such a close relationship, and because like I said, he's done it. He's been there, and and he's been there for my other injuries. Mm -hmm. And but to have him have him there, and, and obviously my other family as well, it was it was something that I I'm so blessed to have mm -hmm. and. He helped, he helped and monitor me through that mo through those moments and and especially like he was there when it he was there when the good times were yeah but he was always there when th there was bad times, times where yeah. where there was times when I had his injuries or there's times when I was playing reserve grade and, and and like no one wanted to watch he was always there and mm. I obviously my other family were as well but my, me, me and my old man we have a good relationship and he's um like i said massive massive for me in my footy career but obviously in my life as well but he also does that for all the other players too eh? he's there because you know when they're going through tough trials where you know they're they're, they're not doing the right thing outside mm. the game your dad has 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 a great ability to bring people back to mm. what's most important yeah definitely and and I think we spoke about it before this, but it's because he cares. Yeah, it does. He cares, man. And the thing about him, he doesn't have any motives. Mm. He doesn't have a motive for him, for himself to, to gain this, this, this. He just does it because he's a good person. Yeah. And he, and a good person, he, he gives people the, the most important thing you can give is time. Mate, like I said before, I said my daughter needs help. Can you help me with someone? And he did. Mm. And, and and during COVID, we were locked down and he, and he said, how much money do you need? Mm. I said, what are you talking about? He said, mate, do you need money? Because I know you, you your business is shut. That's the type of, mm. type of man your dad is. We used to sit in front of Stevie and Marley. Remember when the gym was shut? Yeah. And you'd say to me, um, fuck, man, this business is easy to run, bro. It doesn't look that hard, man. <laughs> Just sit back, collect the yeah, money. collect the money, drink was, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, Kenny, I was under an immense amount of stress. Yeah. And he's saying that, but he put a smile on my face. I started laughing because... Tyron never forget would, that. We'll yeah, chat about it. Tyron yeah. will never forget it, neither will I. Yeah. Till the day we die. When we'll get to about 70, 80, we'll say, Remus, remember that day, bro? But this is the thing. Lone Crow. Lone Crow. He's talking about coffee. I'm making coffees. This guy's now got his, his own beans, man. And mm. it's in Woolworths. And 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 it's it's massive. I see you do videos on it. Um, to get it in Woolworths and those big stores, what was... Did you, did you always have like, five, there's got to be something after footy which everyone should think about. Lone Crow, because we're going to get to the Catalan yeah. Dragons, but before the Catalan Dragons was mm. Lone Crow. What kind of a brand is that for you? Like, obviously, you do, I see you post a lot on it. Yeah, It's something big for you, yeah? Yeah, it definitely is because it represents myself mm. and it represents my family as well. But, yeah, like just touching on that point of, Rugby league, it, 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 it's, if you're lucky, mate. If you're if you're extremely lucky, it's a ten year career, mm. and you and how you live to eighty like eighty five these days. So mm. to have this ten year career, I can't put all my eggs in one basket. Mm. So it ended up being we we had a conversation of me me and my my dad about um what what can I do after footy or what can I do during footy to help me transition. Mm. And obviously at the time you think, oh, well, I'm playing, I'm playing first grade, so I don't need to worry about it or anything like that. So it was like, you know what, we, I actually should think about it. And we thought um, we've always loved coffee, hmm. especially myself going down to Melbourne. Melbourne's apparently the capital of yeah. coffee. So going down there and getting that taste of coffee, um, I had an idea of let, why don't we create an indigenous business and let's sell coffee beans. Hmm. And that's the way it come about. And... And uh, yeah, it's sort of, um, it's come a long way, obviously. And as you know, a, a company or business takes a long time. Mm. You know, this, we created this for about three, four years ago yeah. and it's only starting to see a bit of 
I've you started to see seen a bit attraction of, now. Yeah, seen attraction now. But we started mm. we we started this four years ago. With yeah. Not one cent was in in Lone Crow. So to see it now, and we're, we're trading in Woolies at the moment. We're doing a lot of business to business, and mm. it's doing really well. And oh, I'm really really happy with where it's going, and really happy with the people in it. Like obviously, it's my dad, mm. our family friend Benny Hams. Yeah. And um, yeah, us three are the are the owners Mate. of it, and I'm the majority majority owner. But it's it's something I enjoy. Like mm. it takes my eyes off footy, takes my mind yeah. off footy, you know. And sometimes that's what you need. That's what I need. It, mm. it gives me a, a fresh a fresh start on my days off. I I, I got to do this for Lone Crow, mm. or I got to get this stuff done, or talk mm. to this person. So it really gives me a bit of a taste mm. of what life can be after footy, yeah. and it gives me a taste of so called real world. Mm. Um, and yeah, I like it, man. And I, I really enjoy. I love coffee, and I love the thing. The best thing about Lone Crow and what it does, it brings people together. Mm. You coffee know? always does, coffee, right? Uh, coffee does, that, and that was one of the big reasons for it as well. Was bringing family members, bringing best mates, or bringing just anyone together and to have mm. a conversation. And you know, a lot of like people in a society can get caught up with their phones and the internet yes. and social media and you forget you forget those little conversations where we can sit down and have a coffee and talk you know and so like, I, like we do we, yeah, we, we put each shit each other yeah, <laughs> in exactly, a good way yeah I know exactly like that but, though yeah. that, that's what and that's what I wanted and that's what we wanted as a, as a company was to bring people communities together yeah. and how, how they can sit down at a table and have a conversation over a coffee mm. Things like that. That's what really pushed me to, um, to to pursue this sort of roasting beans and selling beans. And as much as yeah, after footy, but as well as I want to, for me, I like I like to help others and I like to show um, uh, people like a good role model. I want to be, I want to be that kind of person people look up to, and mm. and that's what I aspire to be. And 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 that's all just from being myself and. Mm. And I really love it at the moment. Who came up with the name Lone Crow? Yeah, so we all did. So, so me, obviously, me, my dad, and um, Benny, Ben, Ben, ben Hems. We thought because um, so Lone Crow, the crow is is a totem of mine on my Aboriginal side. Oh wow! Yeah, so that that, that it's a black crow. Mm. So we thought, okay, let's let's because it's Indigenous business. Let's have the totem of a crow, but we've got to think of a name. Think of a name. We'll go through all these. Funny, how weird. hard is it? To come and, it's so right hard, now. like as, as you know. Fuck, man. And you look at one, and that, that's taken. taken oh, yeah, yeah. that's taken. That's oh, taken. Man. And then people don't realize uh, just how hard. Like you're setting mm. up a business, but before you set up the business, you got to look at the name. You, yeah. you got to trademark the name. You got to, and that's a process in itself. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it is. It's it's a long process. It's Fuck, not just a killer, man. Um, Remus's beans, and that's it. That's yeah, a name. You gotta yeah. you gotta look it up. Yeah. Okay, it's taken off. Oh. And then if you get it, you gotta trademark it. You gotta go through this process you gotta look application. At the main name. You gotta do this, this, this. So yeah. it's a lot to it. But I totally um, understand, man. I've been there many yeah, times. I've, I've, you That's know. why I asked you how did you just come up with the name. So you then tried, so crow was the crow part was of there the indig- was part yep. of myself. Obviously, the yep. company's indigenous, so yep. the crow was there. And then we thought, um, why don't we have lone crow? Because we're doing this alone. Yeah. No one else is doing this. Yeah. The word, what we're doing. Yeah. So let's call it a lone crow. Yeah. So we're, on, we're, we're out on our own doing our, doing our own thing. Yeah. So that's the way it come around. We said lone crow. Boom. That's wow. it. Looked it up. Wasn't taken. Trademarked it. And that. And yeah. The rest is history, really. Yeah. And. Obviously, your goal was your goal to get it into coffee stores first, or like Coles, Woolworths, mm. IGA. What was the kind of plan behind it, or was it like, let's talk to this person, this mm. person, this person, and let's see where it goes? Yeah, it pretty much was like that. Like, let's when it first started, let's try, let's try sell one bean mm. first. So we, um, yeah, it was more so just business to business, or was it if it was just giving out free ex- air samples for people to try we started online first we're selling mm. online and that's where you use the social media and we use my profile to hopefully yeah. help sell that and then we go to businesses and we we try still like give them beans to try mm. then so it was it was um it was a big process and you obviously got to start small because mm. uh co- coffee is a very competitive market and mm. there's a lot of big dogs in it you know so for us to come in and start at the like literally the bottom the bottom of the barrel it was hard but we kept chipping away like i said this is three four years ago this is three years in the making 
And then like, we just kept chipping away, kept chipping away, how we can find ways to be better, find ways to sell more beans, um, and how we can use our, my profile, my mates, my mates' for footy profile to help. Because I've seen a lot of yeah. Melbourne players have it. Yeah, a lot, lot of Grant. Boys, a lot of boys oh, have yeah. it. Um, and, and and they've been really good with it. So I've seen Munster in your video too. Yeah, Munster, Munster Harry Grant, and Harry and, and all, like all the Storm boys love it. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's come a long way. But and, and now from when it started, yeah, from, from when, when it started, started, obviously, as you know, yeah. far out, we try to sell one bean, let alone one bag of beans. We got to sell one. It's it, like people think when you do a startup or any business for that matter that it's just gonna happen. Yeah, it never happens that way. It never happens that way. It's almost like you know. You play in rugby league, you mm. know you got to do an off season. You know mm. you got to put this effort in. You yeah. know you got to put that effort in. You got to tick these boxes. If you don't tick these boxes, mm. you can't get the product out there yeah. and the people that have the product. Yeah. When, when, when you look at the process of what it took um, for Lone Crow, do you guys like sit back and go, "All right, this is what the the the, the other brands are doing. These are the metrics. These are the mm. turnovers." What do we need to do to be able mm. to reach these targets that these guys have reached? Do you have those types of meetings? Yeah, definitely. And like you can see business completely differently now, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like we do, uh, we do look over other businesses and how, like, what are they doing to to sell this amount of coffee? What are they doing? Where where we where can we take a bit of that, bit of this, and put it into our business and how we can do it our own way? Where it's yes. not going out and just copying what Campos do yeah. or what Victoria do. Where we take a little bit of that, take a bit of, little bit of that mm. into our own ingredients, and we put our own touch on it, you know, sort of thing. So, mm. yeah, you, you have to, you can't, you can't be oblivious to it. You can't mm. just act like they're not there because they're there and yeah. they're everywhere. So, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's definitely changed my perspective on business, yeah. businesses, and how it runs, and what needs to be done, mm. and the certain things you need. So yeah, we definitely, we definitely have a look at the, but we don't. I feel like we don't get obsessed. Yeah, with course. what others do yeah. because end of the day that, that's what works for them yeah. might not work for us mm. so like I said we just take a little bit of each and how we can be better and we can use that we can use that we won't use that and we put it into our loan crow and, and that's how we represent ourselves and, and we just do what's right for ourselves and what works for our business yeah. it's not going to be the same for what works for others so it's um, yeah it's been a pre pretty good process but obviously hard and long mm. one but it's uh, it's, it's it's worthwhile, it's right? When when you start to see the flowers on the other side, yeah. and after you water in the plants, water, yeah. it, you see nothing, 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 mm. and all of a sudden you start seeing a little flower come up, mm. and it's like another one, another one. It's mm. it's it's rewarding because mm. you know how much hard work you put into put it, it. Yeah. and like we we are the only ones that know three years ago what we're mm. doing, mm. and now people just say, oh, it's in Woolies, oh wow, mm. it's sort of thing that was know? that was the work that was done yeah that was work that was done th three years ago three yeah. four years ago when we had we had zero dollars and we had hadn't hadn't sold one bean mm. to now selling in Woolies, like retailing in Woolies and going business to business and it being an NRL headquarters mm. down in Melbourne that's a couple of NRL wow. clubs so it's yeah. it's going really well that's awesome but it's like I said it's it's good to see the little props now. Yeah. So I remember when your dad was telling me, uh, you know, a few years ago, yeah. fuck, this is going to be, this is a big job. Now, you're in France now, yeah. right? You're at the Catalan Dragons. This is great for business too, yeah. right? Because people are going to get to see the Lone Crow in the European region, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did you think Catalan yeah. Dragons was going to happen? Like, what was your thought process? Did you know that you did want to go to the English Super League at some point? Uh, I, I, at, I, obviously when the decision got closer, um, I did, but even before that I didn't, I had a, I had a very closed mind on going to the Super League and the, um, the talk around the Super League ever since I've come into the NRL was you only go there when you're 35 or hmm. when you're older and, and, and you want to, you just want to sort of hold on and play the last three, four years there. So I've always had that stigma of, no, nah, I never want to go there. And like long story short, the opportunity popped up this year, and it was something I couldn't, I couldn't, could not, couldn't not take. So yeah, I just decided for my for myself and my family that's the best thing for me now. And and like I said, yeah, and then to take Lone Crow overseas and mm. um and sort of sort of show them how the uh, Aussie coffee is and <laughs> and I, I have a couple of the a couple of my mates over there in. 
at Catalans that they'd love the coffee yeah. and the Aussie Aussie guys love the coffee. So it's um yeah, it's pretty cool. Get to take it worldwide now. Yeah. So I'll, t I'll t definitely take some when I go back to um, South France and uh, try spread the word, and I'm sure they'll love it. I'm gonna have to come visit you now in the South oh, of you France, have to. bro. You have to, mate. Because I just told my wife yesterday, I go, we've got to go to the South of France now, Sue. Yeah. We're going next year with my daughters. Yeah. Um, you're in the South of France now. You're an hour and a half from Spain. Mm. Like, what's that experience like, man? Europe's unbelievable. Like, mm. you know, it, it, it's so different. We were talking on the phone yeah. yesterday, how, you know, people get up later. It's, and what I mean by different is this, you feel like there's less stress, mm. right? Mm. Like we live, like in Australia, we live in such a fast pace, yeah, definitely like fast. Is. Everything's gonna happen now. Now, I, mean, yeah. I feel like that today I was talking to Kenny. Yeah. Okay, mate, we just gotta get over, you know, get we're there, setting up all get these done. things right done. now get and I go, yeah. yeah, that's what it's like in Australia, right? Yeah. But you go to France, when are you going back, by the way? Uh, end of the month. Oh, thank God I got you, bro. We're yeah. out of here, mate. Fuck. Yeah, I know. We're in Vegas next week and, <laughs> and then Thailand. But so you, 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 obviously you're going to go back. Your dad, like I was talking to him, I said, well, what's a couple of places he'd like to live, mm. you know, besides Australia? Like yeah. where would you like to go? And he goes to the south of France. Mm. How cool is it to be able to go to, mm. to a place where your dad goes, that's his favorite place in the world? Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. And I've, and I've I've got that from a lot of people actually, and it's um it's a really it's a really nice place, man. Like before me going there this year, I've never been to Europe, so mm. I never knew what how it was or mm. or experienced it. So to be over there and to be the best thing about it is to be able to play footy mm. and something I'm good at. And yeah. do you know what I mean? And, and being a South of France and play there, it's it's unbelievable lifestyle. And like I said, it's a bit slower than Sydney. So when I first went over, I was a bit I was a bit thrown off, you know, because yeah. I'm used to that Sydney or Melbourne no. where it's like a lot of people everywhere. There's cars here, there's cars there, there's trams, mm. there's buses. We're over there, it's, it's pretty much, it's like a sort of jump in the back seat. It's a bit more, yeah, we'll, we'll get it done when we get it done. Mm. But at the same time, it's uh, yeah, it's a cruisy lifestyle, man, and like, I like it. But that, obviously, that it, me playing footy, I, I still have to, it's perform. still a, I still have to perform. Like, if I don't perform, then you won't be there for long, mm. you know, so... In saying it's a cruisy lifestyle and it's less stress, like at least less stressful and stuff. But in saying that, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm still I, like I'm still on it. I'm still working hard. I'm still doing my same things I do here. Mm. Still sacrificing, still training hard. You know, I'm doing I'm still doing all that kind of stuff so I can enjoy that side of, mm -hmm. of France. Yeah. Where if I'm doing the opposite, and then it won't be enjoyable enjoyable mm. for myself. So, it's um yeah. But going back to the lifestyle, it's it's a good lifestyle, man. And yeah, to be able to live there and play play rugby league, which is a sport I love, and mm. I'll, I'll play that for a long time. To be able to play it there and mm. and uh, yeah, and be able to travel, do a bit of traveling and stuff. And like I said, Spain's an hour and a half drive, and there's far out. There's Spain. endless amount of countries around. I want to go to Spain, bro. You're making me jealous now. Like, <laughs> it's like you know when someone talks about food and you want to eat. Yeah, hundred percent. You're making me jealous about Europe right now. Yeah, I know. Um, be, by, but let me ask you this, right? So when when it's a slower pace, there's less noise, you can actually focus on your rugby league more, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's probably the best thing about it. It's you're sort of not in the limelight a lot. Mm. You, you still are in a, to a certain degree, but you know where Sydney yeah, is yeah. and rugby league, it's and even Melbourne to a league. certain extent. You're always in the limelight. There's always that, like, you can't, like, not you can't do this, can't do that, but it's just. Yeah, someone to always see you. So well, look I, at Michael Maguire, stuff like that. Well, he yeah. was in the gym on Thursday, or yeah, I think it was Thursday, Wednesday. Then he had to fly, and then he's all over the news. And then he's just everywhere, everywhere. yeah, like everywhere. 100%. And I obviously I know Madge. He likes to fly under the radar. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't even like doing interviews. Yeah, yeah definitely. He likes to fly under the radar, and then he's like front and center. Yep. It's like you, you're in Melbourne, and then you know you just you you decide you know yeah. enough's enough. I'm going to go to Catalans, and now you're front and center. Yeah. It is too much in your face here. Mm. Whereas in France, you could go, fuck, this is mad. I could just mm. focus on training and focus on my footy mm. and, you know, focus on my business. Yeah, like definitely. It gives you actually more time to focus on your yeah, business, it, right? Yeah, it does. And I feel like that's the mentality I have and that's the mentality you have to have if you go 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 over to these places, mm. especially from the NRL or from Australia where you come from. Mm. You have to be, 
you have to be ready to do that because, like I said, you get plenty of time. It's mm. obviously slow play, so paced, and it's not much going on. So it does give you extra time to mm. do your extra uh, f training, do your extra weights, do that. But then also gives me time to, w to be on call for Lone Crow, yeah. to be on top of that, make sure this is getting done, make sure this is getting paid, make sure all this stuff's, um, you know, all, all, all done and ticked off. So it does give you extra time, and it's a great mentality to have that. Yeah, you're over there and it's not as fast paced, but then that gives you more time to oh. work on yourself, work mm. on being a better player, mm. working on being a better um, owner be mm. of, of my company, all that kind of but stuff. But even a better leader, a role model better for leader, your club. A role well. model. Who's I'm, the coach there now? Uh, his name's Steve McNamara. Okay, I've heard of that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's a um, good coach. But he's yeah, been like, around for a while. He's yeah. been around for a while. He's been there for a, couple, a few years now. Mm. So it's um, it's pretty good. But like, yeah, it gives me a massive opportunity to be to step into that leadership role, mm. but first to lead lead myself mm. before I can lead anyone else, and I feel like I'm doing I'm doing that at the moment. But um, yeah, it definitely gives me more time. How many years you signed for? I'm there for the next two years. Oh, awesome! So, so two years from the start 25, of next 26. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. So that'll take you to 29. Yeah. Have you got? Any um, aspirations to come back and play rugby league in Australia again after your time there, or do you want to just like be able to spend more time there and you know hopefully stay mm. longer at the Catalan Dragons? Uh, I, I, you don't to know be, yet. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't thought that far. But in saying that, I'm t I'll be 29 in two years, mm. where that's young, it's still young, it's still young in, in, in NRL world, you know. And if I decide to come back and and play at, at an NRL club. I know I'll be able. I, I know for a fact I'll be able to compete. Mm. I know my body will be fine. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So it's um. But it's also freshened you up. It looks like you're yeah. fresher, bro. I feel. I feel fresh. You feel like not, there's a weight's been lifted yeah. off your shoulders. And, and it's not to say that no, like that the footy is different, different, or the the training is different. It it's different in its own ways. Well, but yeah. at the end of the day, rugby league's rugby league. Yeah. Wherever you go in the world. Yeah. And at that top tier level, it's still hard. It's still it's still like a fast paced game. It's still like you're still trying to bash each other. Mm, yeah. But um, yeah, I do I do feel refreshed. I, I feel refreshed because not so much the footy, but the off field, where mm. I've had a fresh start. I've had a I'm in a literally in the other side of the world. I'm in another country. Yeah. So that I think that's mentally why I feel so fresh, and yep. even even like physically I feel fresh. But because I've got a new start. Yeah. A new start somewhere where I've never been before. And it's a better, it's a new environment. It's right? a new. Sometimes that's you the best thing about it. It's new, and sometimes you can stay at a, at a place for longer than you need, or you can jump, like just yeah. have a little stab in the dark, and you know you don't you don't know what's going to come tomorrow. So yeah. I just try to live my life a day at a time, and I just try to appreciate the little things in my life and the the time that I have here, and and um, yeah, that's what I try to do, just to you know be the type of person I am. So a lot's changed since the Stevie and Marley days. Yeah, Ben, you are giving it to me, having a couple of pot shots. Yeah. Like, this looks pretty easy, Mets. Now you're running your own business. Now yeah. you understand. You know, and, and your dad was going, look at this guy, Mets. Yeah. I know. Hammering you. <laughs> no, it's good, but like, it like people don't un don't realize business is hard, so you better love what you do mm. because there's, the, there's days that you're going to struggle. Mm. There's days you, you're going to, come up against constant challenges mm. there's days you're going to question yourself and what you do for example you know you're playing rugby league 18 years old this kid's the next big thing bang breaks his leg you know killing it at the storm tears his chest that was fine mm. but tears it again in training mm. while he was at his peak you got to overcome those mm. obstacles because you love the game yeah like you said before when you played at the jets you love the game mm. you love playing with your cousins yeah. You know, you're lucky your dad gave you the foundations yeah. to go, you can either go this way mm. or this way. Mm. Most people go this way. Yeah. They go left. And yeah. They might be talented, but they don't go all the way mm. there. And, and you know, you were able to establish a great brand like Lone Crow. Mm. Um, go to France and play rugby yeah. league there. But it, 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 and what I love about what you're doing, Remus, is there's two rugby league's a business. Mm. Lone Crow is a business, yeah, and you love both businesses, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. And 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 with obviously rugby league, it's giving you the platform, the name, and you're utilizing that name mm. while you're playing to create this brand, which I love about you. Mm. And um, these are the main takeaways. Like when I do this podcast, people ask me all the time, yeah. you know, what's it about? Okay, it's about 
Remus's story because I understand. I, mm. I remember when you were playing for the dogs, bro. Yeah, I know. Like, no. okay, this kid's gonna kill it. Like, mm. I, I, I watched yeah. it with my own eyes when you were at Melbourne. I go, people can't get through this guy. Mm. I seen you. I was talking about the stats with your dad. Mm. So I know what you went through at mm. the two points because, you know, not many players get to be that good, mm. that quick, and then have this major injury yeah. that it's so hard to come back from. And I could always see the bigger guys struggle more. Mm. Like you look at Turbo struggles yeah, yeah. more to come back from an injury than say um, Cleary yeah, yeah. with the same yeah, yeah, or if not worse yeah. injuries. Yeah. The smaller you are, the easier it is, I think. The okay. bigger you yeah, are, the yeah. harder it yeah, is. Yeah. You know, and I could see that. But, you know, mate, I loved having you, bro. This is awesome. I think people have seen the other side of the challenges that you've had to overcome yeah, and just how much you've grown as well. Finally, look, where can people find you? Obviously, Lone Crow is massive. Mm. Follow Lone Crow. Yeah. For sure. Follow Lone Crow. Follow Lone Crow on Instagram. Follow Regal Smith yeah, as well. Follow, yeah. Follow. If you want to see the latest of yeah. the best coffee beans. I'm telling you, that's the best coffee it beans, is, man. I've, tas I've tasted it. I love it. Uh, we've I've got a lot of good feedback from a lot of uh, random people, but a yeah. lot of friends and family that aren't biased. I know that. They'll mm. tell me if it's no good. Yeah. So I've had a lot of good feedback and like it's it's retailing in Woolies at the moment and it's on promotion. So yeah. oh, fuck all there's no better time Kenny. to go get it. I'm going to grind some men and take it to uh, Vegas. That shit coffee there, bro. They're the worst there's coffee. One good, that's terrible, bro. But there's <laughs> one good place, Kenny. Of, where we're staying at the Venetian. I don't worry, I found the place. And I said to him, yeah. I said, bro, you've got terrible coffee. They're going, no, you're from Australia, right? They go, yeah, we make it like the Australians. Really? But hardly anywhere, bro. It's it, terrible. You can't get it anywhere. We need to get Lone Crow into America. Imagine that's a big one. I know. They've got them take trips over there and then have to bring with me, <laughs> Mets. We've got to go do a podcast over there. Fuck, who knows, Remus? Look, let's let's say this, right? Like, I'm turning 48 December 1. Mm. Two years from there, we're going to go. We're yeah, gonna, we're, we're going to go places. Lone Crow, Elevate, Elevate Retreats, all of it, bro. 100%. It's going to be huge, bro. So... Lone Crow, follow Lone Crow. Yeah. Follow Remus Smith. If you want yeah. to see the latest, look, I'm going to make a prediction. You're going to have a massive season next year at the Catalans, bro. Yeah. We're going to go all in. And I'm going to come visit you. I said to Susie, she goes, what are we going to do there? I go, it's summer. She goes, what do you mean they play in summer? I go, mate, they play in summer, man. Come over, man. I'm telling you, it's the summer in the south of France. I'm going to come, bro. Trust me, man. And the place I, I'm Make sure at we find right texture, bro. You, you respond, huh? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you my French number when I get it. So <laughs> make sure you got it. You better, bro. <laughs> but you, you, you got to come over, man. It's an no, un unbelievable part of the world, and especially in summertime. Yeah. Mate, yeah. you love it. Stay at my house, mate. I'll do a bit of uh, training camp for you. I'll train you, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll make sure. I'll make sure um, dad's over there as well at the same time. Make sure your dad's there, man. I want to challenge this guy on the stairs. He's a piece of cake. <laughs> I reckon you got to challenge him on the stairs, mate. He's looking for someone to challenge him his age. Look, I'll beat him, but I, I don't want... I don't need a crowd around me, bro. Yeah. I, I just want to go one-on-one. -on -one. I don't need his supporters there. I don't yeah. want my supporters there. Even though I've got more supporters than him, but I don't want my supporters there yeah. either. Just me and him, toe-to-toe. You to -toe. and him, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> <laughs> you and him, toe-to-toe -to -toe on the stairs and we'll make sure no one's there. And then I'll I'm challenge him on the ski yoke. I'm asking for trouble, Kenny. He asks him for it. But one thing I want to say, finally, uh, Remus, I love your family, man. Brilliant mm. family. Your dad's great. You're great. And you can see... You know what the what work you know your grandparents done mm. with your dad, and what your dad's done with you, and it's so important that we give back. Mm. You know what I mean. And you can see like you want to be a leader and help the others through your experiences, mm. and we need that in our lives. We need people like that. We need more people that can help more mm. people. And that's what your dad is. That's what your parents were for your dad. Uh, for your your grandparents were for yeah. your dad, and I think it's so important. And I want people to understand the message, like like of you, yeah. like what you've done. You've overcome adversity. Mm. You've overcome massive injuries. You had massive wraps on you at mm. each of those points, and it's not easy to come mm. back mentally. Everyone needs a support network, like your dad was, like your other mm. family members were. And that there's so important. And then you went into you're going into the business world, and I'm I'm super proud of you, mm. bro, because I'm loving this evolution. You know, I talked yeah. to your dad a lot about work, work ethic, and 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 business. And mm. so, seeing that in you and seeing how far you've come, bro, is is, is awesome, bro. And it's a proud moment to me. Like, mm. you know, I'm glad I got you in here because I know yeah. how like we've missed each other so yeah, many no, times, I know, bro. I know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah and I appreciate it, Metsa. 
It's um yeah, like you said, it's come a long way. I've known you for a long time now. Yeah, bro. It's been a <laughs> very long time. Had a lot of laughs. Yeah, had a lot, <laughs> lot of laughs, a lot of coffee. Yeah, a lot of coffee. Um, but yeah, no, nah, man. I appreciate but that's what it's yeah, about, right? You have laughs, is. you challenge each other, you put shit on each yeah, other. Yeah, man. Yeah, you have to. It's, you have a bit of a laugh, and like that's I said, you about. challenge and challenge each other to be better. Yeah, and, that, and I'm not doing it for my benefit. I, I, I want to see you do better. You know, yeah, yeah. you want to see me do better. Yeah. So it's never, you never got a motive at the end of the day, and and that's what that's what I aspire to be. I want I want to be someone that people can look up to, or reach out to. I'm I'm a pretty I'm a pretty generous person. And I'm a genuine person. Yeah. I, I don't have anything to gain from anything no, like this, no. you know. So 100%. I like to help people, and hopefully, a lot of people. And are, you're humble, bro. You, you you know you like you fly under the radar. You you just do your work, you know. And, and that, that's what people I think I want people to know that about you. Yeah. That I see you do the work, you know. I I, I talk to you, dad, and and you know mentally you're you're focused, mm. and you know exactly where you want to go. And people might not see that because you're not that flamboyant mm. guy. You're just the guy that flies under the radar mm. and just gets his, his the work done yeah. ticks the boxes i think it's just the way i am i'm 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 very humble i, I yeah. don't need i feel like i don't need all the accolades no, i don't no. need it like I, I deep down i know how hard i work i, yeah. know, I don't need to show people yeah. i don't need to tell people I, if i know deep down if i can look in the mirror yeah. in the mornings look at the the guy opposite me and then know i'm doing everything right i'm okay with that 100%. you know what i mean like i don't need to be out there doing this in this and that I, i'm okay like yeah as long as end of the day I'm being genuine to myself and to my family and to my partner, then I know that things, good things come. You know, yes. good things come to good people that do good things. So end of the day, I just try to be myself and like man, I don't like I said, I don't need all that. I don't need it. You guys can have it, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with doing doing my part to be my best self. But I know if I do that, I'll go to the top. Hundred percent. And that that's okay. Like I don't like I said, I can fly under the radar. I can. I'm okay with that, man. As long it's as it's very I, hard flying under the radar when you're so good. Too. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> but like, you do a good job of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And when it does come to a time where you, you, sometimes you need a bit of like, being out there, uh, I'm, I'm. You know I'm, how to do that. I know, you know how, how to, to do turn, that. You know, you know where to turn it on. Yeah. You know when to pull back. You know when to go where exactly where you need yeah, to go. Yeah, I, I know those yeah. kind of things, and I don't, I don't do things for the sake of it. Yeah. Like I like to be genuine about yeah. things I do and yeah. if I need to be out there for certain things then I'm a, I can do that like yeah. we just spoke about but yeah. end it, of the day I like being humble man I yeah. like staying in my own lane yeah, yeah, I do my good. own thing I live my own life no I love it bro I'm the same like when I leave mm. this place I just want to go home you do, wanna, what, 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 you do what works for you that's yeah what man, you, man. Like, I'm, I'm you don't more, need to be copying the, this guy copy that yeah, guy because he's doing it that's that's not living a genuine life it's just living a fake sort of yeah. fake life so yeah. it's um love it bro you're a champion, bro. Fuck, Mates. that went quick, bro. 